Hello and welcome back to the Squash Bagel. And in today's video, we're going to go over my thoughts and opinions of the Head Radical 135X, which as always is available at squashateers.co.za. One of the first things to mention is that there is a newer model of the racket that I'm reviewing right now. The only difference with this is that it has a newer cosmetic. So this one has the light gunmetal gray and a bit of orange, whereas the new one has a bit of an off-white color and a little bit more of an orange tint and teal to the design. But at the end of the day, it's exactly the same racket. I think one of the only other differences is probably the string that it comes with. For today's video, we're going to cover the following. One, the specifications of the racket. Two, some of the tweaks that I've tried on the racket. Three, the pros. Four, what I found as the cons. And five, who I think this racket may be for. So without further ado, let's go. Okay, number one, specifications. So we have a traditional head shape on the Head Radical 135X. As Emmy suggested, if you saw the thumbnail as well as what I'm showing you right now is a traditional head shape. The head size is quite rather large. You've got 490 square centimeters on the head size, which brings it a bit smaller than your Dunlop Ultimate 132, but also a bit larger than some of your other traditional head shapes. This is heads take and spin on what they would like to call hybrid frame racket. So if you haven't watched one of the videos, um, link it up here. I have discussed obviously what the hybrid type racket is and a hybrid type racket at the end of the day is a halfway point between a racket that will give you a lot of power as well as a lot of control. That can be done through using a smaller head size than your, let's say power frames, which normally would have 500 square centimeters of head size. And having a smaller head size means that you've got a, at least a smaller contact point. So the normal head radical 135 without the X, which is used by Omar Mossad, has a 460 square centimeter head size and your 120 slim body radical, which I believe is used by Amanda Sobe, has a 470 square centimeter head size. This newer 135X is a newer spinoff on your hybrid types of racket, so which is supposed to give you a lot of the power that you probably will get with some of the head rackets which are in the teardrop shape but also try to give the control that you would get with these smaller frames in the head radical series the balance of the racket even though at 135 is head heavy and although it seems like it is a heavy racket that isn't actually the case if you actually have the opportunity to try this out and actually swing and hit with one of these you actually find that as much as it's advertised at a 135 gram frame weight it actually feels quite light this obviously yes might be due to the distribution as well as the design of the racket compared to other traditional frame rackets what you'll see is that this seems rather long giving it a very unique and distinct sort of look. Obviously, swinging through the air, you do not feel any of the weight. And in fact, if something like the head balance of it being head heavy is something that you would not like, I would suggest using your lighter strings, such as your thinner Asherways or your thinner Technic Fiber strings to bring some of that weight or head balance down a little bit and possibly bring it more towards the even side of things. That head heavy balance obviously really helps with the straight line hitting as well as your drives. It helps by guiding the ball obviously into the trajectory of where you are aiming, but at the same time can obviously slow you down with regard to your volley game. And that's probably where I think the slim body versions really do well. I did mention obviously we have a frame weight of 135 grams and all in all with your strings as well as your grip it comes out to 165 grams at least what I measured on my scales. So with respect to some tweaks that I've tried first of all let's talk about strings. The racket came with the head reflex 1.2 millimeter string which is actually really really good. The 1.2 millimeter string would actually suit this racket a lot better than some of the thinner variants that I tried. I did mention obviously stringing with a lighter string to try reduce some of that head heavy balance but if you are not obviously perturbed by that I would actually suggest using maybe one of your thicker type strings and the reason being is I can't really remember where I heard about this concept and I'll obviously do another video when I found out a little bit more concrete evidence and proof around it with the spacing that you have between your strings the larger the spacing between the strings the thicker your strings you'd want to use so in this case I have got the Technic Fiber 1.1s which I will talk about in a bit as you can see the space between them obviously seems rather large compared to if I had to use obviously a 1.2 millimeter string. In terms of the frame design as well as the spacing between each of your main strings as well as your cross strings, you'll find that the racket head shape with the design that they've gone for results in quite a huge gap between each of the strings. The theory would be that you want to actually have your thicker strings on rackets where you've got obviously quite a larger frame or let's say spacing between each string and you probably want to use your thinner strings on something like maybe the head radical 135 or the head radical slim body 120 version because with that smaller head size everything's 
little bit more compact and that's where you're gonna get a little bit more bang for buck with respect to using your thinner strings. And that's just something that I did notice as someone who really likes using my thinner type of strings, I did not feel that I benefited from actually stringing it with a 1.1 millimeter string in this situation. So with that being said, if you do find that you pick up this racket obviously from wherever it is that you source it from and you aren't familiar with the head reflex strings, I would suggest actually keeping them in and trying them out. And if you find that the tension is not as desired, maybe still try going for the head reflex strings with a 1.2 millimeter, but then obviously string to the tension that you would require. And that would actually be a good base for you to start before you start chopping and changing your string. I also tried the Technic 5035 1.1 millimeter string and I strung at 24 pounds, which is a great combination on this racket and something that I feel like I'm going to continue using on any traditional frame racket, stringing around 24 or 23 pounds, just because of obviously the control that the head and the shape of the racket deliver. I can obviously optimize power by stringing a little bit lower at 23, 24. I was a bit scared in the beginning, but obviously speaking to a couple of friends, Rudolf from Swatcheteers.ca as well as visiting the string doctor, I found that it's actually not abnormal to even go as low as 22 pounds, depending on the frame that you are using. So the Technify 1.1 millimeter strings is the last string that I did try on this one, but obviously just because it is there, we spoke about it now. I also tried the Ashaway Multinic 18s, which is also quite a really, really good balance at 24 pounds. And I felt that that also gave quite a very good option with respect to delivering power as well as control and feel. In fact, I find that that string performed better than the Technify 1.1 millimeters on this racket specifically. So the Ashaway Multinic 18s come in at 1.15 millimeter being a little bit thicker i think maybe even if i had to go up in terms of maybe some of the super nicks which are at 1.25 millimeters maybe i probably would have enjoyed that a lot more as i did mention i don't think that it would be an ideal solution to try the thinner strings on this frame the last thing that i tried on this was the ashway power neck 18s and i don't want to discount the popularity of what i would like to determine or call my favorite string but i obviously made one very fatal error which i would like to make sure that you don't so with respect to ashway strings there are a wide variety in range of strings on their website and that they provide but one thing that you should look for or should be very vigilant of is if the string that you use from Ashway contains a material called Zyx. Any of the Ashway strings that contain Zyx need to be strung at 10 to 15 percent less of what you would normally string. For me enjoying the 24 pounds that I tried without thinking about it and without reading I actually went to get my racket restrung at 24 pounds thinking that it would play at 24 pounds and was shocked when I didn't actually have the same sort of power that I was getting from the Technic 501.1s. As I just mentioned now you need a string at 10 to 15 percent less of what you would on a nylon string so if I wanted it to play at 24 pounds I actually needed to string it at 21 and a half which is my mistake. The strings didn't last very long because I just found the racket unplayable at that tension, at least for my preference. So just something to be aware of with respect to the string that you're using. Sometimes obviously just to take a quick squiz and look through the instructions or the directions of use can be very important, can save you obviously a bit of money. I know probably some people would actually just carry on playing and playing with the strings until they snap. Unfortunately, I do know that one of the advantages of the power neck strings is that they are very durable. So I knew that I was gonna be in for a very long unsatisfactory ride if I did not cut them out and change back to something that I would have liked. But if I had to rate the four strings that I did try, I think it would be the Ashway Multinic 18s, the Head Reflex 1.2 millimeter. Then I would go down to the Techni Fiber 305 1.2 one but obviously i'm saying the power neck 18 is last just because of my experience but i think if i got the string right it probably would have actually probably ranked a bit higher up compared to the technic fiber 305 1.1 so this is a message for my South African audience. Are you sick and tired of trying to find your favorite racket only to be let down by either a high price or lack of stock? Well, squashtears.co.za is a solution for you. They have a wide range of squash rackets, squash gear, strings, and whatever it is that you're looking for all on their online website. I think two of the sweeteners that I can mention is the fact that one, they offer these products at very competitive prices, and two, you get free shipping orders at 3,000 rand or more. So click the link that I've left down in the description below to visit their site and find some awesome deals. And when you check out, let them know that the Squash Bagel sent you there. Happy shopping. Okay, so let us look at the pros. So one of the big pros that you can see compared to some of your other head radical range rackets is the fact that this has a rather large head size. I did mention that it comes in at 490 square centimeters, which is rather large considering the fact that your head radical 135 comes in at 460 square centimeters and your head 120 slim body comes in at 470 centimeters. So with the large head size comes a lot of power. I have mentioned the fact that yes, 
power can be compensated for by reducing the tension of your string on your racket and obviously by choosing a string that delivers a lot of power and is known to deliver a lot of power. So that is something that you can circumvent if you would like, let's say, a smaller head size. But what I'm saying is with respect to this racket comes at quite a large head size and the nice thing about it is it comes with a really good factory string. The head reflex 1.2 millimeter, so you can take it off the shelf and you should be pretty happy with the power that is delivered. With the large head size, it means that it is very forgiving, so off-center shots don't actually feel as bad. And this is actually really good for maybe some sort of beginners or people that want to actually use a traditional head shape or maybe might experiment with the whole hybrid concept. A racket like this is obviously quite a good way to enter into the market and actually see if you like the fact that you can get a little bit more power out of your traditional frame. As mentioned, with the large head size, you get a lot of power, so great amount of power at the right tension. You can obviously reduce the amount of power delivered, even though it's got a larger head size by stringing a lot tighter. But I wouldn't suggest that, obviously, yes, if you are looking for more control already, you've got that with the type of frame that we have on here. But the bigger head size, as I mentioned, is geared towards delivering a lot more power, a little bit more forgivingness, and maybe it also helps you step down towards maybe your smaller head sizes. With respect to durability, it is a rather solid racket. Um, everything from the grommets as well as the bumper guard, as well as the material of construction and also just how it feels in hand and after I've hit the wall a couple of times, it is a very durable racket compared to some of the other rackets that I've held. In fact, I did not feel any sort of worry when I had hit the wall against the wall and I knew I was gonna be able to carry on without too much of a hassle or an issue. And the last benefit is obviously the fact that it is head heavy and with the head heavy rackets, you do have the opportunity for your balls to be guided, obviously, towards the direction that you wanna hit which also does help with your straight line hitting and something that is added, which is something that obviously every squat player should master. If it means that you use a racket like this to help you get your timing right, that will be a perfect example. This is a perfect example in order to actually get that right. So let's speak about some of the cons. As much as it is a traditional frame racket, the larger head size definitely does provide a reduction in control. Compared to your 135 radical as well as your 120 gram slim body, versions of this, I think the larger head size, yes, definitely does help with it being a little bit more forgiving. But at the same time, the comparison of the 135X compared to your other smaller head sizes is night and day. You don't get the same amount of control. As mentioned, this can also be compensated for with stringing at a higher tension, and maybe that could be a good alternative. I found that if I want a lot more control on my teardrop shaped rackets, I would obviously string at a higher tension. So that is something that you can do and you can use to compensate for the lack of control. So as much as my drops felt good on this racket as well as my bodies, I don't think they felt as good as it would be with the 120 gram slim body version or the 135 gram radical. Although I did not use those, I have obviously rackets with similar head sizes being a Technic Fiber Supreme, which comes in at 470 square centimeters, which is the newer SAL version. And I have an older Supreme, I think it's actually the second one ever made, which is a sort of very silver and green cosmetic. That has a head size of 466 square centimeters. So I definitely felt the touch component being enhanced on those rackets compared to this one. But at the end of the day, it does deliver a lot more control and touch compared to some of your teardrop shape rackets out of the bat. Okay, one of the cons is obviously the weight. And with that being said, actually I mean the maneuverability. So the pro obviously on the weight of the 135 radical is the fact that you are able to achieve your beautiful straight line hitting, but at the same time, in terms of maneuverability, you've got 165 grams of a racket overall. So yes, it is maybe 10 grams heavier than some of the more popular rackets, but you definitely feel that. I wanna say it's awkward to get into the air for you to actually play your sort of control shots or your volleys. It's just that a little, a little bit more effort is required and a little bit more thought is required. So better preparation, if you've got really good racket preparation, then it shouldn't be a problem for you. You won't actually even notice it. In fact, it will probably even help you because your racket prep is so solid that your racket's up. That by the time you hit on the ball, the fact that it is obviously very forgiving and the larger head size, as well as the fact that it's catered towards control will definitely help and aid you in putting the ball where you need to put it. Last but not least is the feel of the racket. So it is a rather rigid frame. It's not a soft frame by any means, which is a pro definitely in terms of durability, but in terms of the con, you don't get as much feel. I think also with respect to the fact that it is not a slim body version, I think that's what where you probably get a lot more feel and feedback on your shots. The fact that it's not a slim body version, I feel that you obviously lose out on the feel component 
but that can be optimized for once again with a good string that you can use. So changing the string could actually really, really change and alter the performance of this rack. I didn't mention that when I used the Martinique 18s, I felt I got a lot more feel out of the rack as well and a lot more feedback, which was very encouraging. And I think, as I did mention, will be the go-to string that I would use on this racket part per se. So who is this racket for? Well, I think this racket is for the player that is looking to either experiment with the traditional frames so coming from a teardrop shape coming down to the traditional frames if you'd like to experiment with a rack like that and not really suffer with the extreme or big loss in power i think this is very good for giving racket that can help you adjust and actually come down to the traditional frame after playing with this racket for about eight weeks i definitely felt a lot more comfortable playing with the Tekken fiber supreme again and would actually use that um, and have actually played a couple of matches using that and I would not have been as comfortable if I did not take this transition step. So I think that's what your hybrid rackets definitely do give you and if I think about it, yes, Head has definitely achieved what they set out to do in terms of providing a hybrid racket. So as much as it might not look like your traditional hybrid rackets such as your Dunlop Evolutions or Oliver, you know, hybrid shaped rackets with the traditionally known as hybrid shape rackets. It has done actually a really good job for me in switching from your traditional or your teardrop frames, obviously down to your really, really smaller, more popular traditional frame rackets. I would also think that it would suit players that are maybe looking for a little bit more power, but do not want to switch from a traditional frame to a teardrop. As mentioned, yes, with this racket, you do get a lot of the benefit of having a little bit more enhanced control, but at the same time, you can deliver a lot more power due to the fact that it has a larger head size. So obviously changing your string and everything like that, you can actually fine tune it to actually give you the best of both worlds. But yes, you will not have an out and out power racket and you will not have an out and out control racket, but this is a good go between. So for people which are transitioning either from a smaller head in the traditional frame who would like to go to or either get a lot more power this is probably a go-to racket or you have people as i mentioned which are going from a teardrop shape which would like to experiment with the traditional frame rackets this is probably going to be one of the rackets that i could recommend for you to actually help with that transition and smooth over and smooth that transition lot over and i think the last person that i would suggest that would benefit from using this racket would be the up and coming and talented juniors which are looking to develop their overall ability in the game so they were looking for a bit of power a bit of control they need to obviously learn that component until they feel that they want to be more of a power player more of a control player this is probably a happy medium where they can experiment with both aspects of the game up until they realize what their strengths are before they can decide obviously with their coaches and parents that they would want to play more in the power type of game or the control type of game so a racket like this can give them the best of both worlds obviously as i did mention not fully power not fully control but would deliver and give them the ability to either keep on using a racket so it can give them an overall court ability or for them to explore different aspects of the game so that they can at least make a more informed decision all in all the 135 radical definitely delivers with regards to being the hybrid racket that head intended and suggested it definitely brings the best of both worlds with regards to the control and power and as i mentioned has helped me explore both sides of my game and enable me to be comfortable playing with your smaller traditional head frames as well as your larger teardrops as well it was a really good go between and i'm actually going to keep one on the side just to make sure that if i ever need to switch or you know as the season changes that i go from playing with a traditional head shape in summer because obviously the ball's a bit bouncy and then i want to go over to your teardrop because in winter the ball gets a bit colder i definitely would use this type of racket to help me smooth over the transition between one frame and another although it delivers you know the best of both worlds I didn't mention the fact that it's never going to be an out and out power racket or an out and out control racket, but I think a lot of people who have used this racket before are happy with the fact that they've got a happy medium between both of the extremes. So if you've ever used one of these, um, the head, head Radical 135X, there's not a lot online about the racket itself, except for squash gear reviews itself. If you ever use this racket, let me know, tell me what you found about it, if you are still using it, or if it has helped you transition from either a power player to control player or for control player to a power player. Take care and see you next time. Cheers.